Hey guys. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA with Chris. Arnie. We got PW, Mr. Paul Welsh back here. And what are we doing? We're headed to Galpin Auto Sports, gas, to pick up a friend's, what is it, 69, right? I believe it's a 69... 69 SS Chevelle. Chevelle. Uh, that's had a full build done on it, very mild, very sleeper. Um, now that the car is complete, ooh, listen to the whine of that CTSV supercharger. Ooh, am I a little distracted? Hell yes. So we're on our way to Galpin Auto Sports to pick up uh, Nick's 69 Chevelle. It's had a full build on it, fairly sleeper, actually very sleeper. Um, and now that the car is totally complete and ready to go drive, Nick wants to sell it. Yep. So I'm going to pick it up, get it back to Autotopia, and we're going to get this car sold for him. You guys ready to go for a ride with me? I know I'm not keeping up with Chris and his V-Wagon. No, no. That's not <laughs> happening. You guys ready to go for a ride? Yes. Here we go. Here is the 69 Chevelle of my buddy Nick that, uh, that we're picking up from Galpin Auto Sports. This car is great, man. Obviously, you can tell it's very sleeper. It looks almost like an original car, and a lot of it actually is. It is original, white on red. I love that he went with 17-inch wheels instead of the stock 14, so he could put disc brakes on instead of leaving the drums on. I love that he kept the 396 sticker on the air cleaner, and that's the original air cleaner for the car, but he went up to a 454. I love that he changed the rear end on this car, changed the gearing on it, so when you're on the freeway at 60 miles an hour, you're not banging red line. Now you're at 70 miles an hour, and you're sitting at two grand. Took out the Turbo 400 Trans and went to a four-speed automatic, so you've got an overdrive gear. All the suspension has been changed on it, went to the Hotchkiss. Still not coilovers, still springs, but Hotchkiss. So better torsion bars all around, a better shocks, better springs. I've been told, I'm about to find out, I've been told from one of the guys here, Mike, that I trust a lot at Galpin. He says this is the best driving Chevelle he's ever driven. So I'll talk more about the car while I'm driving it as I'm learning and understanding what it's about. Uh, so from here, I'm gonna say, Let's get in the car and drive, man. All right, we are driving. I spend so much time in pro touring and resto mod cars where you know, you've gone pretty aggressive with things like suspension, motors, transmissions, chassis builds, on and on and on and on. Um, this isn't that. I can already tell from driving it, there's there's that little bit of bounce to it, you know? It's not it's not on coilovers. It's not a chassis build. This is a, this is an OG car. Yeah, gets up and goes. It's not a monster. It's funny, right? It's a, about a 500 foot pound torque car. I think he said it's right around 400 horsepower. I guess I'm so used to driving, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand horsepower cars. But anyways, back to the suspension. You know, think about an old 69 Chevelle. It's gonna be bouncing all over the place. It's gonna be really sloppy and sluggish and squishy. This isn't that. Well, it's got a stiffness to it, but it's comfortable. It's not, it's not stiff pro touring mode where, where like I'm going to be breaking my back in the next five minutes. I'm at 65 miles per hour and I'm at two grand. Now I know on a traditional 69 Chevelle, 
with a turbo 400 or equivalent transmission um, usually around a 410 gear on it means it's 60 miles an hour I'd be pretty close to red line now if the gas gauge is accurate that means I'm almost out of gas which uh, might want to deal with that pretty quick coming up here but yeah man great driving car so far and this is a driver Chevelle this isn't uh, this is far from a show car when they did the build on it they left the paint that was on here the car has been painted before and the paint looks great on here is there little blemishes yeah there are there's there's little blemishes big deal I do have cold air which is a good thing I'm stoked about that and you can tell it's disc brakes I mean think about old drum brakes I know drum brakes can work great if they're if they're properly set up you can actually get really good braking out of a drum I'm sure people are gonna argue this one especially some of the OG guys that say you don't know what you're talking about dude drum brakes work better than disc brakes no they don't they just don't if they did why would we have changed over? Why wouldn't we still be running drum brakes? It's not for the look, especially on a car like this where the wheels covered up. You don't know that this is a disc brake car. So let's be honest here, guys. Drum brakes do not work as well as disc brakes. All right, so here we are going through, obviously not a radical turn, a pretty big sweeping turn on the freeway, not off or on camber, just kind of a flat turn with bumps in it. I know what a 69 Chevelle all original, all stock would be doing. I'd be bouncing and flopping around and wondering if I could control it at 70 mile an hour. I dig the, the old muscle cars, the looks of them. I just, there's something about it. I guess partially it's, it's the era of car that I grew up in. So I love these late 60s, early 70s American muscle cars in looks. I gotta admit, I've driven enough old, all original, numbers matching, collectible vehicles where the talking points on them are great. And then you get in and drive them. And I'm sorry, again, all the OG guys are gonna get pissed off here at me. But let's be honest, they kind of suck to drive unless you're driving 25, 30 miles an hour putting around the side streets. Get on the freeway. I'm going 76 miles an hour right now and I'm cruising. I could roll to Vegas right now other than I would definitely need fuel, which I'm pretty confident I do need. Um, this, this is a properly built car for the guy that wants to look like he's cruising an all original Chevelle, but he's not, he's driving a car he can drive. It's just digging this car, man, as you can tell, right? And it's such a contrast from what I'm typically driving um, in that most of the vehicles I drive are pretty radical. If they're an old car, they're radical in all the modernization, all the modern technology. I'm gonna run over the quick, the quickies on this one again. This is a 1969 Chevy Malibu Chevelle. The motor's been swapped out from a 396 originally to a 454 been re-geared I think he's down around 310 something like that um, so you got a much taller gear gone from a three-speed automatic to a four-speed automatic so we've got this nice overdrive gear it is a factory air-conditioned car they weren't all back then went from a bench seat which is horrible unless you got a hot chick sitting next to you that you want to get her a little closer to you um, gone to buckets gone from the column shift down to a console shift suspension is just noticeably different on here it's not a coil over car it's not a chassis build this is an original car it's a unibody it's the chassis and the body are all in one um, but all the torsion bars have been redone on it better springs all the hotchkiss bolt-on stuff that makes the old bouncy just crap driving car very drivable. I love the color combo. Tell me this isn't a perfect, uh-oh, I am running out of gas right now. That's not good. I'm really close to my exit. Shoot, turn off the AC. Maybe that'll get me the extra couple miles. Hey Siri, call Paul Welsh.
<laughs> All right, so I'm in neutral cruising right now because I think the car, well, I don't even think, this car is out of gas. So I'm gonna, but it's cool. We've got a shell station right here. I'm gonna coast in. Oh no, it's a red light. No, ah. oh, it's turning green. I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it. All right, I'll see you guys at the shell station. <laughs> All right. Come on. Oh, it's still running. It's still running. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. People move. 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 Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We're going to make it. Awesome. <laughs> so I guess I was right at the beginning, which means the gas gauge on this car does work. I guess I've dealt with too many of them where it's not accurate that I didn't even give it any kind of concern. But here we are at the gas station. I made it. <laughs> with this car Mike and the guys at Galpin Auto Sports you definitely nailed it which doesn't surprise me I have I always have high expectations from you guys and yeah you guys that's it man I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this sucker in the shop and I'm looking forward to getting this sold for my friend Nick and putting it in the hands of somebody that's really looking forward to having a great driving 69 Chevelle All right, you guys, well, that's the 69 Chevelle of my buddy Nick that we're putting up for sale right away. If I could afford it, I would keep this car because it drives incredibly well. And this is one, you know, you look at it, it's really super cool, but it's not like crazy show car, like Tantrum or like Vicious or a lot of the stuff I show you guys on the channel. This is one you can drive it, enjoy it. It's mellow. You can park it anywhere and not be worried about it. It's fairly sleeper. It's actually very sleeper. Um, and just a really well done car, man. This is one, this is one somebody can get in, turn the key, enjoy the drive, and, uh, and probably never lose money on it. So I'm stoked that I get the opportunity to sell this thing for Nick. And I'm super excited because from time to time, I'm gonna need to take this out to events and show it to people. So it's another cool one to have here at the shop for now. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys hanging and supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. All right, man, later.